because the anatomical relationships of uh, petrous apex is variable and to get an anatomy anatomical understanding from an otological perspective like if you see from the roof from the uh, if you decapitate a skull and if you see the petrous apex yes of course you will be able to understand the anatomy much better but if i tell you from the otological perspective it might get a little difficult for you to get an idea about the petrous apex so here we're going to discuss the different lesions that could occur in the petrous apex how to identify them clinically radiologically and then um, how to uh, you know go ahead with the treatment plan so well, let's get into the class and let's understand the anatomy of the petrous bone and the lesions that are associated with it. So if you see petrous bone is a leaf like bone it is present somewhere near the in between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the occipital bone. So what you see here this is the greater wing of the sphenoid posteriorly we will have the occipital bone. We have the clivus lying here and just adjacent to the clivus would be your apex of the petrous bone. So this clivus uh, forms the medial boundary anteriorly you have the greater wing of sphenoid posteriorly you have the occipital bone and these forms the these form the medial anterior and posterior boundaries now this bone has got a superior surface and it has got a posterior surface now one very important structure that is of importance to us as an otologist is to understand the uh, canal that we have on the posterior surface so the canal that we have on the posterior surface is the internal auditory meatus so all of you can make out this canal that you see this is your internal auditory meatus now you have got this border which is your superior border so the surface that we have anterior to it this is going to be your superior surface and where you have got your internal auditory canal that surface is called as your posterior surface so let's see the anatomy so petrous apex lies lateral and adjacent to the clivus which means medial boundary of the petrous apex is nothing but that of your clivus it lies anterior to the internal auditory canal so you can see this is your internal auditory canal it lies anterior to the internal auditory canal it is wedged between which two bones anteriorly what do you have you have the greater wing of sphenoid posteriorly we have got the occipital bone so it's wedged between these two bones now the superior surface that we see here this is your superior surface this forms a part of your middle cranial fossa and the posterior surface marks the anterior part of the cerebellopontine angle. So we have the brain stem with midbrain pons and medulla and we've got the cerebellum covering the pons and that angle that we have is called as the cerebellopontine angle and this posterior surface marks the medial boundary of the CP angle. Now the two surfaces are separated by the tentorium which is attached to the ridge of the petrous bone. So we've got the tentorium cerebri and that is attached to the ridge of the petrous bone. So if I show you the anatomy in a little bit more magnified way let us see this is where you have got your clivus and here you will have the brain stem with midbrain, pons and medulla. This brain stem is covered with your cerebellum right. So if I ask you that this is the apex of the petrous bone right what is medial to it all of you know what's medial to it it's your clivus if i ask you what is anterior to it we just read what is this bone it is your greater wing of sphenoid bone as simple as that then we have got the superior surface so what is this surface that you see here this is your superior surface. So superior surface is in relation to which cranial fossa is it in relation to anterior, middle or posterior cranial fossa? It is in relation to the middle cranial fossa. And then we have got the posterior surface. So what is this posterior surface having? It is having this canal which is called as the internal auditory canal. So if I ask you this posterior surface is in relation to what structure medially? You will tell me ma'am it is in relation to the cerebellopontine angle because you see this is the cerebellum in relation to pons. It is in relation to the cerebellopontine angle. And then what is attached to this ridge of bone that is present superiorly? The tentorium cerebri is attached superiorly. So this basic understanding you should have in relation to the petrous bone. Of course there are more anatomical relations that we have but this is from where we start. So if we have to draw a line diagram for the petrous bone how would we draw? Let us see. So if I take this as a decapitated skull 
what would I see? Anteriorly, I would see what? The greater wing of sphenoid. Just medial to it and inferior to it, what will I see? I'll see the clivus. Just below that, what will I see? I'll see the brain stem having midbrain, pons and medulla. And what is it covered with? It is covered with cerebellum. Then, what bone do we have here? We have got the petrous part of the temporal bone like this, which is sandwiched between the greater wing of sphenoid anteriorly. And here you have got another bone. This bone is nothing but your occipital bone posteriorly. Correct. Now, the apex is in relation to which bone? It is in relation to clivus. Now, this has got a superior border. The superior border divides this into a superior surface and a posterior surface. Now, what do we have on the posterior surface? A canal. What is this canal? Internal auditory canal. So, this internal auditory canal is related to what part? It is related to the cerebellopontine angle, the anterior part of the cerebellopontine angle. Now, if I ask you what cranial nerves come from pons, your answer will be 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, 5 and 6 nerve go anteriorly towards the apex of the petrous bone. So, we will see 5 and 6 coming anteriorly towards the apex of the petrous bone. Now, what nerve travels in this meatus which is located on the posterior surface which we call it as the internal auditory meatus. We have two cranial nerves which are running inside this which will be your seventh nerve and the eighth nerve. As simple as that. So, which two cranial nerves go inside? Seventh nerve and eighth nerve. So, internal auditory meatus is traversed by which two cranial nerves? Seventh nerve and the eighth nerve. So, I hope this is clearly understood by all of you, the anatomy in the region of the petrous apex. On the superior surface, what do we have? The superior surface is related to the middle cranial fossa. So, again to reinforce the anatomy a little bit more, what you see here, this is your petrous bone. Anteriorly, it is related to the greater wing of sphenoid. Posteriorly, it is related to this occipital bone. Medially, it is related to the clivus. Here, you have the brain stem having the cerebellopontine angle. And this continues a spinal cord which goes through the foramen magnum. Now, from the pons, you have got the 5 and 6 nerve going anteriorly and 7th and 8th nerve going into this canal, which we call it as the internal auditory canal or internal acoustic meatus. So, you can see this is the internal auditory canal, which is present on the posterior surface. Now, if I ask you, is your petrous apex forming a part of your foramen lacerum? Yes, it is forming a boundary of the foramen lacerum. Which boundary would you say? The anterior boundary of the foramen lacerum or the posterior boundary of the foramen lacerum? So, it forms the posterior boundary of the foramen lacerum. It is also related to the horizontal part of the carotid artery and to the eustachian tube. So, we know that eustachian tube is present in the anterior wall of the middle ear and uh, it is in very close relation to the base of skull. So, you will have the petrous apex related laterally to the eustachian tube. It is also in relation to the internal carotid artery. So, if you see the boundaries are marked by major blood vessels and structures which are superior and inferior petrosal sinus. As the name suggests, there's a petrous bone. Above and below, you have got the sinuses, which is called as the superior and the inferior petrosal sinuses. Now, it is related to the horizontal segment of the internal carotid artery and the eustachian tube laterally. I will show that to you in a while when we discuss the... Um, when I'll show you the surgical approaches, I will show you the carotid artery and the eustachian tube. So, you'll get that anatomical understanding better when we're talking about surgical approaches to the petrous apex and that is where you'll get a better understanding of that. Now, apex forms the posterolateral boundary of which foramen? We just saw foramen lacerum, the posterolateral boundary is formed by the petrous apex. Now, the trigeminal ganglion is a depression which you see on the posteromedial aspect. And the sixth nerve crosses it superior on the superior surface. So, we have got trigeminal ganglion on the posterior and the medial aspect. And we have got, so somewhere here would be your trigeminal ganglion. Okay, so you will have the trigeminal ganglion on the posterior medial aspect. And you will also have the sixth nerve running below the Dorello's canal, which is formed by the petrospinoidal ligament. <laughs> 